Hi, I'm Lynn. And I'm Leo. Welcome back to Yoga with Lynn and Leo. Yes, and today we're going to be working on deeper actions in some of the familiar asanas, but quite precise symmetry today. Yes, so get on the mat if you're not there already. You may need some equipment. You can see that we've got a yoga chair. You could use any chair. Four foam pads. If you haven't got pads, you can use folded blankets. And I have also got a blanket there as well. So get some equipment out if you follow. Okay, so we're going to come for our first pose. Firstly, standing in Tarasana because this is when we prepare. So just take a few moments to just feel the earth, the ground, get grounded in your Tadasana. So experiment with the weight. So see that the weight goes back into the heels so that it ignites the lift of those legs and so make sure those legs are really nicely lifted. Now extend through the frontal hip bones. So Leo will just point to the frontal hip bones here. And you've got to get that lift out of the pelvis so strongly so that you can root down with the legs. So you have to imagine that the legs are, they've got lots and lots of roots going down inside the leg and those roots have got to go down through to the feet so that you're very well grounded. And from there, you lift everything about those hip flexors and roll your shoulders back and down and be aware of your chest. So lift the sternum chest, broaden across the collarbones. Now keep the facial features nice and passive and quiet. And just for this moment, be aware of your breath. Breathe through your nostrils and see that the broadness of the upper body calms with the breath. And as you release the breath, the ribcage start to recoil. And just be aware of that for a few moments before we come for our first pose. So stand in a very good, steady, stable, extended Tadasana. Okay, so now from there, taking the fingers to your chest, we're going to jump for Trikonasana. So jump those legs apart. Good. So it's very dynamic action, turning the feet, left foot in, the whole of your front foot and leg turning out. Now remember that this is also about opening the gateway to the rest of the body. So we've got to get this rotation in the front thigh. It's really important that this leg rotates, the outer hip goes in and take a breath in and extend over into Trikonasana. So although it is a lateral forward action, you've got to keep the weight right back into the back leg and this outer hip's got to lift up very, very strongly, as much as you can. Just for a moment, take your hand onto the hip and see that you lift this um, outer hip so strongly to rotate the chest even more. So these ribs need to start to revolve so that the spinal action is long and extend it so that you can start to turn the head, turn in the head, so you can look up. Now take the arm back up, good. Now be aware of your breath, and on an inhalation, see that you come out of the pose. And then turn the feet face forward, so we come to the other side, turn your right foot in, your left foot out, and remember, Keeping that balance and stability in the back leg, ground it down and extend over into Trikonasana. Being sure that although again it's a forward lateral action but we're getting some work in this hip, it's got to really lift up to get that deep extension, deep opening, deep extension throughout the whole of the body. Now putting the hand onto the hip and sit. Keeping that action in the hip, keep the hip lifted, start to see if you can bring those frontal ribs. So you have to see those left ribs come forward and you turn, you turn, you turn. So you're looking towards the ceiling. So remember, it's very difficult to look up when the spine is looking down. And then the arm goes out a little like this. So this is not a good action. Keep that rotation and get that turn and then take the arm back up and breathe. 
Good. Take an inhalation and come up out of the pose. Turn in the feet to face forward and bring in the legs together. And stand in Tadasana, just recover for a moment. And be aware of that opening of the groin. So you have to trace from the inner ankles all the way up through the inner thighs, all the way through the inner legs and lift up through the body groins. Let the shoulders release down and just let the glance be soft. Let the breath be soft. So just take your time with this pose to recover before we come for the next action. So the next pose we're coming to is Paragasana. So some of you may be familiar with the gate pose. Leo is going to take this blanket so that she has somewhere to go to. So you can see that there's a fold of the mat here. So this can be quickly prepared. If you've got quite a thick mat, then you probably won't need to fold the end of the mat. So just taking the leg out to the side, so you're taking the right leg out to the side and then straightening. So the heel goes in line with the center of the knee. And then as you can see, Leo's extending the foot onto the blanket because what happens is the groin needs to lift up. So if you soften the knee slightly, rotate the thigh completely, and it's this body groin that needs to lift up, yes, to pull the leg up. And once you get a little bit more action, you can push the foot down. So it takes a little bit of practice. It's a very, very strong action. So this is what happens when you start to work deeply in the poses you access those body groins. It's a very important action. Take the arms out to the side, and now rotate the arms, and then extend in. As you extend over, you've got to see that this back leg is working. The grounded action of the shin needs to be moving down very strongly, so it keeps this hip lifted. So remember what we were doing in Trikonasana. So we want to keep this hip nicely lifted, and extending and then taking the arm over. So keep grounded in the base of the pose So be aware of the shin of that back leg, pulling up the thighs, lifting the hip bone and then reaching over, keeping that extension without collapsing. So be aware of the groin by moving that outer hip, that outer right hip in deeply. The outer hips got to move in very, very deeply so you get that rotation, rotation. And then take a breath in and coming up. Okay, and then release it. So we come to the other side. So these are deep actions on the groins. Taking the support if you need one, you may find that the foot goes down to the floor very easily. But sometimes we have to find that we have to awaken the groin so that we can get that action. And that sometimes takes a little while. It might take um, a few months of practice or a few years or many years. <laughs> so it is quite a challenging action. Okay, so remembering, grounding that shin down. So you have to see that that right shin is moving down, the front of the foot is moving down strongly pulling up the kneecap and thigh and taking the arms out to the side. Now rotating the arms so the armpits are nice and open and then hinging laterally over to the side. But remembering you've got to keep this groin lifted so don't drop in this leg. You've got to see that this leg lifts, it, it reaches through to the hips and then you extend through the center of the body. And then taking this arm over. Now remember this action, this outer hip's got to lift up very, very strongly. This outer hip, this left outer hip's got to work and breathe. Don't forget to breathe in the pose. Keeping that action and then extending up. And then coming out of the pose. Good. And stretching the mat out if you folded it. So with that, Previous pose, the Paragasana, you may find that you can take the palms together, but just be careful that you're not dropping that outer hip. It's a very, very important thing to keep it in. 
All right, so we come for Opalista Kanasana now. So, Opalista Kanasana. I'm just going to move the chair. Yeah, okay. In case I bang into it. Yeah, let's move it. Okay. So, taking the legs nice and wide. So, when you come for Opalista Kanasana, it may be that you can't take the legs very wide at all, and that's fine because this pose is something that needs to be practiced alongside your standing poses. And just to sit in this position can be quite challenging. So if you find that you get a little bit um, of a pull in your inner thighs, you have to see that you lift the base a little bit higher or you bring the legs slightly in. So a couple of foam pads underneath the buttocks is quite useful because this will keep the pelvis lifted. So when you're in this position, see that the center of the heel bone is moving down and there's a pulling back into the body. So all this soft tissue fiber needs to move right back into the body, this direction. And then ground those thigh bones down. See that you lift up out of the pelvis to remember Tadasana. So when you're extending your Tadasana action, you have to see that you lift above the pelvis. Keep the area between the lower ribs and the pelvis really long. Roll your shoulders back and down. Lift your sternum chest up and breathe. So to sit in this pose can be quite challenging. So just take a few breaths. Again, scan the legs, make sure that they're moving in the right direction, extending into the heel, bringing the toes towards you, grounding down into your thighs and lifting up out of the pelvis. So of course, this pose, when you come forward, becomes a deeper action. So we do have this, um, all this to Kamasana action in our pose directory, but for today we are just sitting in the upper vista Kanasana action to start with. We're going to then now bring the legs in for Baddha Kanasana. So I'm going to put another couple of hand pads, a little bit of extra support. Okay, so a lot of people are challenged by Baddha Kanasana. So taking the legs so that the feet are together in this way. So it may be that you find it very challenging to take those thighs down. It does take time, particularly if there's tightness in the sacral area, tightness around the hips, but you've still got to keep this lift. Now, if you find that the legs are going up in this direction, then you need to sit a little bit higher so that Gravity will help move those thighs down and just be consistent with your practice. This is the key thing for this action, but also working deeply in the poses within this sequencing. So lifting up out of the pelvis, keeping that action, keeping the lift through the center of the body. And rolling your shoulders back and down. Keeping that action. And now be aware of your inhalation and your exhalation, keeping that nice extension. Okay, so some of you can take the thighs down to the floor, but if you're one of those people who have got a little bit of stiffness in the hips, you can see that Leo's making her little um, podium here, this little platform, which is really a nice way of working. Because what's important when you sit on the support, you're aiming to get your legs in a similar uh, position as you would on the floor. So these outer thighs need to touch those foam pads. So the outer thighs need to go down. They need to touch down onto those foam pads strongly and lifting up. So this action to sit in this position is really key and to ground down the thighs is really important. So it's good to have that long platform, whether it be a bolster 
or a couple of foam pads, but I think the foam pads are a little bit firmer and they work quite well. So when you come into the forward action, then we come to the chair again. This is a bit of a creaky chair I picked up. It's the worst one that we have. And we have plenty. But this is the worst one. Okay, and then you're going to come and extend forward. So the reaching up is really important to start with. So you reach up and catch onto the top of the chair. That's it. And then move the abdomen deeply towards the spine side. Yes, and you can start to see that the symmetry is coming. You can come along. You can even put a bolster or blanket onto the chair so you can rest the head. Or you can take the hands from there onto the seat of the chair and then you take the chair a little bit further away. But the aim is not to get onto the seat of the chair. The aim is to get the extension. So the extension starts with an upward direction. And then you can come a little bit lower. And when the thighs start to extend a little bit more, then you can start taking the supports a little bit lower. And then you can develop the pose over time and then coming up and through the skin. So you can extend towards the wall if you have got a yoga chair and walk your hands up the wall or find something to support yourself on. Okay, we need the chair now because we're coming into a chair shavasana. So I just move the chair out of the way so Leo can move her supports and then the chair is going to come back and you're going to lie down into this lovely chair shavasana. I'm working in this way just to soften that abdomen and releasing, releasing the thighs. This the squeaky chair, this one. Oh my goodness me, yeah, it's so good. I know, it's bad. Out of all the chairs we have, <laughs> All right, so now, just melt into the floor. So soften around the facial features. Let the back teeth completely release. Let the front body just become soft, moving towards the spine side and be connected with the earth. Let the abdomen completely soften, completely release. And just observe your breath that inhalation and exhalation. And you can stay here for as long as you wish to. But we're coming to the end of our video now. So if you enjoy our videos, then do press the like button or subscribe to our channel. Namaste.